All right, so today we're going to talk about cyclic coordinates and applications to the Kepler realm. So last video we talked about how energy could be conserved, but we could also have other quantities being conserved in a system, uh, mainly momenta. And we'll discover in this video on what exactly is conserved and the conditions that have to be met. So if we just write out the order of Lagrange equation, which we have right here, then if we saw, if we had the case where partial L over partial Q was equal to zero, then we would just be led to this equation. Now, that seems like I'm making a pretty big assumption when, how come that term would ever be zero? Well, it turns out that does have a physical, physical meaning, I should say, because most of the time our Lagrangian is a kinetic energy, which is a function of Q dot in general, well, not in general, but usually it's a function of Q dot, the kinetic energy, and the potential is usually solely a function of Q. So whenever I'm talking about partial L over partial Q, well, what quantity is that? That's going to be partial V over partial Q. And since I'm taking the negative partial L over partial Q, this quantity is exactly equal to the force in the Q direction, just like in classical mechanics. So whenever I'm saying if partial L over partial Q is equal to zero, I'm not saying, well, if this entire half of the equation was equal to zero, then we'd have something that's conserved. What I'm saying is, if we don't have force in a particular direction, we're going to have something that's conserved. The quantity that's conserved, well, if we integrate this equation right here, we just get that partial L over partial Q dot is conserved. And this is what we're going to define an analogy with Newton's law as the momenta. But this is going to be called the canonical momenta. So it seems kind of weird that it's the momenta in this sense isn't going to be just mx dot or something like that. It's going to be dependent on how the Lagrangian looks and what your Q dot is. So in general, when I say momenta is conserved in this series, I'm usually not talking about mx dot, like in Newton's laws. I'm talking about something a little bit more general, just that partial L over partial Q dot. So this is still going to be a useful quantity, though, because any conserved quantity is a potentially useful thing. Because, for example, if I have this conservation law right here, well, that means whenever I'm setting up my system of equations, I've got one less equation. So this will come up uh, when we talk about the Hamiltonian formalism, but whenever we have a situation occur like this, this equation can kind of be removed from the system, and that's going to be a very useful thing. So next, we're going to talk about an example of this. Alright, so at the very beginning of the video, I said we we're going to tackle the Kepler problem, and we're going to do it in Cartesian coordinates first, and then cylindrical coordinates, to see how changing uh, your coordinates can actually lead to simplification of the problem, which is going to be very useful. So the Kepler problem is the problem of moving in a 1 over r squared uh, gravitational force. So that co corresponds to a 1 over r potential. But r is, of course, the square root of x squared plus y squared. Uh, so, 
we've got a potential of x and y that's equal to some proportional constant k over root x squared plus y squared. So if we write out the Lagrangian of the system in Cartesian coordinates, we have the following, because it's the total energy, so the 1 half m, then we've got the x dot squared plus the y dot squared, because we've got motion in the x direction and motion in the y direction. And then we have to subtract off the potential, and then since the potential's right here, that just gets plugged in right there. And then, so the condition on the conservation theorem was that partial L over partial Q has to be zero. But what's Q? Well, it's any one of those generalized coordinates. So if we take partial L over partial X and partial L over partial Y, we get something that's not always equal to zero. Since it's not equal to zero, then momentum in the x and y direction is not going to be conserved. However, if we tackle this problem from before in the cylindrical coordinate system, so in other words, we need to make the point transformation x is equal to, whoops, my bad, is equal to our cosine theta, and y is equal to our sine theta. Then when we plug that into our potential, we get k over r, but I mean, that's just the definition of that potential, so that's a little bit easier. And then if we plug it into our prescription for the Lagrangian, so our kinetic minus potential, the kinetic is gonna be one half m, and then we've got our linear part of the kinetic energy, so the translational kinetic energy in a way. And then we've got our angular kinetic energy. <clears throat> so our rotational energy, I think it's sometimes called. But anyways, it's equal to r squared theta dot squared. And then we have our minus potential, so minus k over r. And this time we're going to get some a little bit different. If we take partial L over partial R, well, we get something that's not equal to zero. But if we take partial L over partial theta, then, well, if we look at our potential, it's just a function of R, it's going to go to zero. So that directly implies that momenta is conserved. But what's the momenta in this case? Well, it's going to be partial L over partial theta dot, since momenta in the theta direction was conserved. So if we take partial L over partial theta, well, this, oh, theta dot, my bad. Well, this 2 is going to come down here, and we get M R squared theta, which should look familiar. This is the definition in introductory physics of angular momenta. But what does that mean physically? Well, there's no force in the theta direction. If we draw out the path of this orbiting body, for example, uh, like supposing it was an ellipse or something, We'll show that in future videos. But the force is always in the radial direction. You've never got this uh, force. You don't have a like tangential force right here. It's just perpendicular to the motion at all times. So that means momentum in the theta direction is always going to be conserved because there's never a force changing that. Alright, so I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments if you did. See you in the next video.